you know, when we talk about look, seeing Iraq in the lenses of conflict, that is a very recent development. Well, I mean, yes, the recent sort of happened the last two decades. We can talk about the 1980s war with Iran. Things were not as drastically as then the 90s with Gulf War One or Two and the sanctions specifically, and then the invasion, which is a very, un, you know, kind of um, uh, really unfortunate development. And Baghdad particularly was a thriving capital, a major sort of contemporary center of development. That's why the image that we see of Baghdad today, and from my conversation with most American people, you know, they have this very dark image of Baghdad, and that was certainly not the Baghdad where I grew up. And definitely as, you know, most third world countries have one major center, which is normally the capital. So while a lot was taking place in other places in Iraq, everything was kind of coming to the center in Baghdad. Baghdad, in the 40s, they started the Institute of, of Fine Arts, and then you know, eventually in the 50s, uh, the uh, 60s Academy of Fine Arts. So everyone would come from various parts of Iraq and end up in Baghdad, kind of like being in New York, even though now we have more than one center. But that was the center for development. So anyone who wanted to become an exhibiting artist, take part of the activities that were taking place, would end up in Baghdad. The first generation of artists, you know, kind of covered the 1950s, 40s, 50s, you know, overlapping with early 60s. And some of the famous names, or the most popular names for Iraqis at least, and uh, slowly getting known in the rest of the world as well, artists like, for instance, Jawad Salim, Shakir Hassan Al Said. Those are artists who um, not only became the teachers of everyone else in the generations that followed, but also kind of established, set the standards for the development of Iraqi modern art. Um, Jawad Salim particularly, he's mainly a sculptor who worked in painting as well. He's well known for the Monument of Freedom in um, downtown Baghdad that shows up in every image. And that was, this was the last piece. He died before he even finished it. This is sort of the culmination of all of his studies. But along with Shakir Hassan al Said, they started the Baghdad Modern Art Group. And that group very much kind of established this idea of seeking inspiration from heritage, looking back at what they had as opposed to Western abstraction that Europeans were working on. So while the first generation, the pioneers, were trained mainly in Western um, capitals and universities, the second generation that we're seeing here, which is sort of the generations of the 1960s, were mainly trained in Iraq. When the um, Institute of Fine Arts started, and that was a stronger program actually than the academy, and then the academy was established, it was populated with Iraqi uh, faculty. And so in fact, it was a uh, magnet for Arab artists all over the world. It's one of the few universities that, or you know, academies, institutes that were teaching fine arts in the, um, uh, the Arab world. So many of the Arab artists were trained in, in Baghdad as well. So this second generation were mainly the students of Jawad Salim, Shakir Hassan, Faik Hassan, and so on. And those, those group of, of uh, pioneer artists affected the development of their work tremendously. I guess one could say that artists never stop working. They work whether it is war or peace. Perhaps more war than peace would be effective. You know, they feel the urge for working. Now, it has affected this, the generations of artists today because they are not able now today to work in Baghdad and because of the mass migration that's taking place of artists leaving, but all creative people or all intellectual people. So the real conflict, one can say, started in 2003 with the invasion. That's when situations situation affected the development of the art tremendously. Well, recently, you know, in the last few years, since 9-11, because there was this whole idea of bridging differences through the arts, understanding other cultures through the arts, so there were, you know, not just Islamic art exhibitions, museums started looking into the contemporary. But so there isn't a beginning of a development. There are a few shows like this, and so that, you know, we hope that in the future, the interest develops more and there will be some more literature and more you know, knowledge about it.